Well, g'day curd nerds, I'm Gavin Weber from littlegreenworkshops.com.au and today we're going to make Oaxaca. Now Oaxaca is a string cheese, pasta falada cheese, that is traditionally made in Mexico. It was brought over by Dominican monk, monks. Uh, so the process of the pasta falada stretching. And I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, six balls of Oaxaca cheese. Um, very similar in texture to mozzarella, although I did use a different recipe. In fact, I cobbled this recipe um, together myself and changed everything that I thought I needed to make it acidic enough uh, to be able to stretch the cheese. And thank goodness I did because the stretch on this curds was really, really good. Anyway, let's see how we make queso Oaxaca. So for a pasta falada cheese like this, you need unhomogenized milk. Now I'm using unhomogenized milk from Inglenook Dairy and thanks for the guys there for supplying it to me. The ingredients you'll need is 10 litres or 10 quarts of whole cow's milk, 1 quarter teaspoon of thermophilic starter culture, 1 eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture, 1 sixteenth of a teaspoon of lipase which has been diluted in quarter cup of non-chlorinated water, 1 quarter of a teaspoon of calcium chloride which has been diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon of liquid rennet and I'm using single strength IMCU 200 and that's also diluted in a quarter cup of cool non-chlorinated water. You'll also need a saturated brine solution which is about 18% and you'll need a bowl of cool water. So clip your thermometer on to the side of your pot once the milk is put in there and we're going to heat the milk up to 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. Now it doesn't look like that there but uh, it will heat up as it goes along. Now we're going to add in the uh, mesophilic starter culture. I'm using a Mad Millie sachet there. You can use a single use sachet or just add in the, the right amount. And there's the thermophilic starter culture, just sprinkle that over the top of the milk as well. Now it may seem like a lot of starter culture, but what we're trying to do is acidify this milk really quickly so we can make a pasta falada cheese. Right, so cover that and allow the starter culture to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're going to stir that into the milk. So I'm using a top to bottom stirring there, trying to get the cream mixed back into the milk again. And all the starter culture mixed thoroughly throughout. So just another check of the temperature of the milk. I'll use my trusty thermo pen and as predicted it has creaked up and it's nearly at the target temperature so 35 which is perfect for um, the ripening of the mesophilic starter culture to start with so that's going to ripen for 60 minutes the thermophilic won't really act in uh, won't kick in too much during this period so the thermophilic culture will happen later on Anyway, so after it's ripened for the 60 minutes, um, stir the cream back in again. And you see a fair bit of it has floated to the top. So we'll just stir that back in using a top to bottom motion. Okay, now I'm, I was taking pH measurements, um, but first of all, we'll just check the temperature and it's close enough to 35 Celsius for me. That'll do, that's good. So we're gonna add in the lipase now 
and the lipase needs to be added 15 minutes before the uh, calcium chloride and the rennet, or it kind of inhibits the rennet action. So I'm just stirring that all the way through. And now we're going to allow, cover that and we're going to allow it to rest for 15 minutes. There we go. So 15 minutes later, give the milk a stir again. And this is where I'm going to take a sample to check the pH of the milk. So just make sure that's thoroughly stirred through. So I can get an accurate sort of check on what the pH for the milk is. So I'm just taking a little scoop out of my stainless steel cup there. So it should be approximately 6.5 at this stage. If it's a little bit lower, which means it's a little bit more acidic, then that's okay. Um, so now we're going to move on and we're going to add in the calcium chloride solution. By adding this, this helps the uh, adds back a little bit of calcium uh, to the milk to help it set a better and firmer curd. So we stir that for about a minute, and then we go and find our rennet. So we're going to add our rennet solution to the milk now. Just stir that in, and stir for no more than one minute. If you stir any longer, there's a chance that you may start to fracture the curds uh, as they start to set. So Now I stilled the milk there, you saw me still it, um, so it's not moving at all. Now we're going to cover that and allow the milk to set for 45 minutes at 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. Okay, now we're going to check for a clean break. Now if you don't get a clean break like this one, that's a beautiful clean, blake, clean, clean break there. If you don't get that, then wait another 15 minutes and uh, try and test again. Now I'm going to cut the curds into 2 centimetre or 3 quarter inch cubes. Um, you'll see I'm not using my trusty curd heart because that is calibrated for 1 centimetre cubes. Which is um, well, about half an inch, a little bit less than that. Anyway, so I'm doing the uh, the two uh, the vertical cuts there, and then to do the horizontal cuts, I'll do it at a 45 degree angle, uh, all on all four sides. Now this works mostly, but you will find that you probably will get some rather large chunks of uh, curds that you'll need to cut as you start stirring. So just pop the lid on and we're going to uh, let the curds heal uh, for five minutes. That stops them fracturing when you start stirring them. Okay, a little bit of whey on top, it's a good sign that everything's doing what it should be. So I'm just putting the thermometer back on because we're going to start uh, stirring the milk. I just want to check what the temperature is. It has it dropped down. It's dropped down by about half a degree Celsius. That's fine. So we're going to gently stir the curds now for 30 minutes and I just turned the heat on there and we're going to slowly heat that up to 42 degrees Celsius or 108 Fahrenheit. So you can see I'm cutting the uh, large cubes of curd that uh, I didn't manage to cut during the uh, the cutting process. So just cutting and stirring just so they're all fairly evenly cut. There are some rather large chunks there so um, as I'm stirring there I cut them as I'm going along. Okay, so 30 minutes later, and we're very close to the target temperature. So it's, uh, what, 41.5.6, that'll do. So close enough to 42 Celsius for me. So the temperature is uh, fairly even, that's pretty close to 42 or 108 Fahrenheit. And 
just going to grab my trusty iPhone there. So we're going to stir for another 30 minutes whilst holding the temperature at 42 Celsius, 108 Fahrenheit. Now what this does for us is it allows the thermophilic starter culture to start acidifying the curds because their premium temperature range is between 40 and about 45 Celsius. So that's spot on for the thermophilic culture to start acidifying. So I have finished uh, stirring there. That's 30 minutes later. Well, all right, I'm still stirring, but uh, not for very much longer. So just take all utensils out of the pot. And we're going to allow the curds to settle for one hour and 30 minutes. This is to help acidify the curds even further. Okay, so we're going to drain through a cheesecloth lined colander. You can keep the whey if you want to. Um, it's up to you. I chose not to this time around. There we go. So just pop the curd mass into the colander. Give it a bit of a pat down. Now allow them to drain for 30 minutes. Now at this stage you can test them. Uh, test the pH. And the pH of my curds at this stage was 5.2. So it was okay to move on to the next stage. That 30 minutes will probably allow it to drop down by uh, one decimal point. Meanwhile, heat up eight liters or eight quarts of water to 85 Celsius or 185 Fahrenheit. And now we're gonna move the curd mass to the chopping board. And then we're gonna cut the curds into five centimeter or two inch cubes. I'm using my trusty curd cutting knife there. It's nice and long and you don't have to muck around too much. You just press down and it cuts the curds. Now we're going to move the cubes of curd into a large wide bowl. And this helps us a little bit later on when we add the hot water to start stretching. So we've got all our cubes in our big bowl. So I'm going to get me steaming hot water here. Here we are. And I'm going to ladle that over the curds until they're just submerged. And wearing heat resistant gloves, we're going to knead the curds until they're consolidated into one big mass and it becomes a little bit shiny. Now I have seen uh, on other videos and TV shows, seasoned cheesemakers not wear um, gloves. I don't know how they do it because that water is so hot. So I'm just tempering the curds, so drain it off and then what we're gonna do is we're going to add more hot water um, and we're going to cover the curds again until they're just submerged. So I'll go get my pot of water again. So I'm going to ladle over some more hot water at 85 Celsius, 185 Fahrenheit. Over the top of my curds, which have been warmed up. And this way, by doing this, the water temperature stays higher for longer and helps you stretch the curds into the shapes that you're after. So what I'm doing here is uh, pinch off uh, the curds into six even size balls. Uh, I didn't really know how much to, uh, to pinch them into, but I thought six sounded like a pretty good number. So that's what I'm doing here. So take one ball and uh, stretch it out into one big long thread. And you can see there the curds are just perfectly um, at the right acidity that you can stretch them. Now, I didn't have a long angle camera, so, but anyway, I'm winding it up, winding the thread up as you would a ball of yarn. So it looks pretty cool. And then just tuck the end in under the last bit. Pop that into a bowl of cool tap water. 
and then keep stretching and rolling up the remaining balls of, of curd. There we go, that looks lovely. Now if you find a bit doesn't stretch, then just pop that back into the hot water and that'll help you stretch again. Now if you also find that the uh, curds start to fracture, then uh, you need to um, either change the water out, make it a bit hotter. Um, yep, see there you go. So I just dipped it back into the water again so I could uh, stretch it even further. There we go. Beautiful big long strings or threads of curd there. This was actually so much fun. I really did enjoy um, making these little balls. I was actually chuffed to bits that it actually worked in the first place, but uh, to get this much stringiness and stretch, it was just absolutely fantastic. There we go. It's a nicely shaped ball, that one. Now, I felt that the water temperature had dropped down a little bit. That one was starting to split. So what I did was drained off the water again and pour some more hot water back in over that uh, curd ball. Okay, which was much better. Just make sure you get these really heavy rubber gloves. It does work wonders. I couldn't feel the temperature of the water uh, very much through the gloves at all. So anyway i chose that, that that bit was a bit too big so i made a smaller ball and now i'm going to make a normal size ball here now by dunking the end back in the water again you saw there that uh, i could stretch it a little bit more there we go lovely there's my six balls so they're just in cool water. They're not in iced water or anything like that. It's just to bring the temperature down a little bit so that when we brine it, um, yeah, they don't uh, heat the brine up. So we're just going to leave those in the cool water for five minutes to cool down. Okay, so once that five minutes is finished, we're just going to tip that water off. You can see all those lovely Oaxaca balls there. Lovely cheeses. There we are. Lovely. Very proud of his work, that man, isn't he? Okay, we're going to brine the cheese. Now, here's a brine I prepared earlier. Uh, for those who want to see my brine video, you can check it out. A little info bar comes up now. Now, we're going to place the balls in a uh, cool brine. 18% uh, saturation for 60 minutes. That's one hour. Now, I was thinking about putting them back into the brine, and I thought, no, nah, just leave them like that. Much easier. So at about the 30-minute mark, I just turned the balls over. That's all I had to do there to make sure that they were evenly brined. Very cool. And there they are, I've drained them. I'm going to air dry them for about an hour. That gets any moisture off them. And I actually stored them then in a ripening box just for one day to let the lipase kick in and uh, provide a big boost of flavour. So as you saw, a very simple process. You know, all we had to do was wait a certain amount of time. And the good thing about this cheese is all you have to do really is wait um, and a little bit of stirring. Um, it turned out very good. Now, I haven't tasted it yet because I'm going to wait until it's brined for an hour. I've only just finished putting it into the balls. Um, so I'll do a separate taste test video uh, than this one. But anyway, they do look absolutely fantastic. And uh, I must attest to the recipe that I cobbled together um, to being good enough to be able to stretch this into nice big long threads so I could wrap it up into these ball shapes so fantastic absolutely lovely well thanks for watching the video don't forget that you can subscribe 
and uh, hit that little notification bell to be informed of any other cheesy videos that I produce. You can also become a patron of the show um, either via the YouTube memberships or via Patreon. The links are below. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.